Hey guys, how's it going? I am back. I know I took a unexpected, I guess, week break. Um, but I had, so I thought I would be able to make videos, but I had a friend uh, coming from a couple states over that stayed for like five, six-ish days. And I didn't want to be rude and we had a lot going on. So, uh, you know, I just didn't get to making any videos. Uh, but I'm also going away in July, like around July 4th for a week. So I kind of really don't like that I took off a week, so I'm going to try to make some extra videos in the meantime to release while I'm gone in July. Uh, fingers crossed for that. I hope I can do that, but I, I think that's kind of doubtful. Anyway, guys, um, first things first, before we get to the new addition to the family, uh, our new leopard gecko, who is actually supposedly 11 years old, and she's female. Um, and some disclaimer, she's not in the best shape. She's a little underweight, and by a little, I mean... A good amount she doesn't have much muscle on her I'll show you the enclosure she was in and now I don't want to take a stance kind of where we're shaming someone so please no negative comments or anything about the previous owner um, let's just make this a learning experience but real quick before we get to that remember we have a Dubia Roach giveaway going on and I'll put a little link to it in the top right or something uh, where those cards are and that ends on Friday so not this video but I think the next video is when I will be announcing the winner so make sure to check that out and follow all the instructions and you'll be entered uh, Alright guys, so let's get to it. I'll quickly show you what this uh, leopard gecko was in previously and then I'll kind of show her uh, show her current setup and what my plans are and everything. So let's go. Let's get to it. Thanks for dealing with me while I took a week off. Alright, let's go. Real quick guys, if you can, check that lower right hand corner, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when I post more updates. Thanks guys. Alright guys, excuse the mess in here, but this is what she was in. Uh, again, I know a lot of you guys are not going to like this, um, but let's just keep it a little civil. If you have some negative feedback, you can post it, just like nothing over the top. Basically, she was on a little bit of sand. I don't know how often it was changed. Um, now, it wasn't put up like that. I just kind of pushed everything to the side, um, but she has like a little water bowl in there. Um, and uh, just a rock and her hide is basically that bark right there. How they fed her was they just put crickets in there every week and had them run around and she would have to eat them. Um, they didn't really have them on a schedule or anything. I think she just ate whenever she wanted to. I'm actually really surprised that um, no impaction or anything occurred. I don't know too much about leopard gecko impaction. I know it's a huge topic in terms of substrates with uh, leopard geckos. Uh, but she ate crickets off of sand for like 11 years. She had a heat pad. Um, it wasn't too great, um, but she had a heat pad. No UVB lighting or anything. It doesn't look like she has any metabolic bone disease or anything, um, at least uh, from pure observation. Uh, she is pretty underweight though, like I said, but I'm gonna get her. I'm actually already ordered some UVB and stuff. I'm just waiting for it to come in. Um, so I have that all going, everything. I got our new heat pad, uh, but everything should be rolling in this week. Uh, this is pretty much like a 10 gallon, I would say. I don't even, actually not even that. That looks much smaller than a 10 gallon. But yeah, it, it very restrictive. Definitely not, you know, the best setup for a leopard gecko. Um, but you know, there's, you know, everybody's not as enthusiastic as a lot of us keepers are, guys. You gotta remember that. Um, and that's just something I, you, you really shouldn't get nasty about. Um, it's good to educate people, but nobody's going to listen if you're mean to them. And that's a real problem in the community right now. So even though this isn't the best setup, the best way to prevent this is through positive education and not really ripping people a new one. That's not going to work out, guys. We'll go take a look at her now, and we'll go take a look at her current setup, and I'll talk about some of my plans. All right, currently we have the leopard gecko in my girlfriend's office. She's over there doing some art. Hi. John, it looks so bad right now. What do you mean? What do you mean you look bad? John, I doing? don't have a camera on my stream for a reason. <laughs> She's actually streaming right now on Twitch. She does art. You want some awesome art, guys? 
go to charmshe.co. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry guys. Anyway, this is what I currently have our leopard gecko in. Um, it's more temporary than anything. I actually want to do something fully bioactive if I can. I just joined a bioactive leopard gecko group on Facebook. I'll plug that in the description. Um, so just the basics right now. I have a little bit of a water bowl. I didn't really look into much about whether they respond more to being sprayed or a water bowl. Um, I have to look into that a little bit more, but until then I have a water bowl. Um, and I just put two hides in. Right now I'm feeding her on tongs and she's a very enthusiastic eater, let me tell you that. Um, I was not thinking that she was gonna respond that well, but she, I guess, you know, from all those years of not having a full diet, um, is very responsive to food. So in the back hide there, um, if you see my finger in the back there, uh, the bigger one, I have the heat pad under it. It's getting up to, I think at most like 91, 92 degrees. I have it on um, a little control thingy um, right here. This is what I used uh, for, uh, what's it called? My Dubia roaches. I took it from there. I actually have to get a new one for them. Uh, it, if you guys have a better idea of how to control temperature for a heat pad, since it's a little harder with this, since uh, it's a probe and it kind of is not resting too much against the heat pad, it doesn't really pick it up super accurately, um, I would really appreciate some suggestions. It, I could do it, but I can't like, for instance, it says 89.9 right now, where it's really probably like 92 degrees. I just had to set it a little lower, because uh, if you put it at like 92, 93, then it really goes to like 98 or something like that. Anyway, let's take a look at her. Like I said, guys, she's not in the best shape. Uh, she's very cute though, and I'm hopefully gonna be able to get some weight on her. Um, I'm doing it slowly, just don't wanna shock her system, but let's take a look at her. All right, guys, this is Lizzie, 11 year old female leopard gecko. Um, as you can see, her tail does not have a lot of thickness, so, and her body, you know, as well, so, uh, she is really kind of underweight. If you could see her arms, look how thin they are. They're it's, so little. It's really unfortunate, but I'm hoping that I could, uh, you know, get her up slowly. Uh, she's very active and alert. I think she's in really good shape for, you know, her, you know, past 11 years of what she experienced. So uh, I'm, it's not the worst case scenario, I don't think. Uh, she's very cute, very well handled. Um, a couple things I want to point out that I'm not sure are something, but I thought I'd ask you guys. Um, on the top there, you can see a little bit of, uh, some bumps. I don't know if that's an indication of maybe some, uh, metabolic bone disease or anything. For the most part, she looks good, but there's definitely a little bumpiness to her spine right there. Um, other than that... There's a couple discolorations that I'm not sure if they're just discolorations or there's something to worry about. For instance, you see on her side right there, there's a mark on her tummy and on her knee. Uh, I don't know if that means that there was like a burn there since it looks like it's an abnormal coloration. Uh, and on her thumb there, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, that looks like it's just a coloration, but I just want to make sure it's not necrosis and it's not going to spread if so. So if you guys can get some advice on that, I'd appreciate that. I am not totally well versed in leopard geckos. Um, I know what I need to do to get started. As I said, I already purchased a lot of things, but some of you experts out there, some of you who have been keeping leopard geckos for a while, really would appreciate your help. So feel free to comment. I would like to do whatever I can to give her the best life for, you know, whatever she has left. So... If you look at her toes, I think her toes look good for the most part. Um, I'm not sure what toes for, you know, a normal leopard gecko look like. It doesn't look like anything was, uh, what what would I say, uh, like stuck shed and it popped off or anything. Um, so I don't think her toes are anything to worry about. I see all of them, except for that black toe like I mentioned. But like I said, guys, yeah, she, you know, she's got no UVB or anything. She's definitely underweight. Uh, it's just really sad looking at her little arms. Um, oh, she's looking at me. She's so cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, uh, any suggestions you guys have to get her to good health and everything, um, get her life a little bit better, really appreciate it. But this is the new addition to our family. She was named Lizzie, a uh, very basic name. I don't know if we'll rename her, but that's up to my girlfriend since she nah, wants to take... she's a Lizzie. I don't want to take that name away from her. <laughs> since she wants to take charge of Lizzie here. So uh, that's why she's in her office. 
But yeah, this is our new family member, guys. Um, I'm very thrilled to have her, even though she has some issues, and I'm really hoping that I can make uh, the best life for her possible. So um, that's what we got today, guys. I'll wrap it up in a minute. All right, guys, so more videos will be coming on Lizzie in the future. Uh, I just wanted to do an introduction to our new family member, give her kind of current state of uh, living and stuff like that and what happened to her in the past. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to do something bioactive, thinking something with a sand-soil mix um, and something other in there to make it a little bit more compact so there's not a lot of extra loose substrate. Uh, I'm going to put in some, you know, plants in there, uh, get an LED, LED light for those plants and stuff. So do something really cool with it and I'll show you guys how I do it and everything like that. Right now I'm waiting for two Arcadia products to come in. I got the Shadow Dweller for UVB, the 12 inch, and I'm going to put that inside the enclosure. It's a 40 gallon breeder. And I'm also waiting for an Arcadia Deep Heat Projector uh, for a little extra basking. I'll put that on a nice uh, sleep of a rock or something like that and that should give some extra heat inside of there along with that heating mat. From there we'll kind of get more into the bioactive setup as I kind of learn a little bit more but she's doing good right now uh, on the paper towels until I switch her over um, and I kind of just want to make sure everything's okay with her until I really start changing things up. So I want to get her more stabilized and then we'll get to some interesting stuff guys. So uh, like I said, stay tuned for that. There's many more videos on Lizzie to come. Uh, anyway guys, like I said, give me some suggestions if you can. Uh, also if you haven't, please subscribe, comment, leave a like. Join this community. I'm really thankful for all you guys. Make sure you join the Doobie Roach giveaway. And that's it for this video. I will see you Friday where I will announce the Doobie Roach giveaway.